Hey, welcome home to Cassidy. My name is Stephen Mitchell, and it is awesome to be here with you. Good morning. I am so glad that you are joining us for uh, this time so that we can come together, whether online or in person, and celebrate the God who loves us, the God who has called us into relationship, the God who reveals himself to us in Jesus Christ and then calls us into a deeper, abiding, loving relationship so that we can be made more like Jesus, so that we can love him deeply, so that we can live boldly, so that we can just be different kinds of people, not afraid to care and love others, not afraid to live fully in the light of Jesus Christ. And so if you're new here, I just wanted to say first, you're welcome here. You're going to find that that we recognize we're not perfect, but we know the one who is, and that's Jesus Christ. And we want to invite you on a journey with us so that together we can be made more and more like Jesus, so that together we can be the people that God wants us to be, so that we can serve God and serve our neighbor and live boldly in the promise of who God can make us into that we are not afraid of all the things that this world can throw at us. One of, the, one of the biggest fears of my childhood, one of the first things I remember uh, as a kid uh, is being afraid of the dark. Maybe you didn't have this fear, but I think everybody kind of does uh, to some extent. Maybe it's not as overwhelming as it is to, to some people, but uh, all of us have a little bit of a fear of the dark. When I was a kid, uh, my, one of my chores was to take out the garbage. Uh, I had to take the garbage out, and then I had to take the garbage cans to the street. And I, like many uh, young folks, adolescents, uh, decided that I would put that off as long as I could. Procrastination was my middle name, as my mom used to say. Uh, and so I would just put it off and put it off and put it off until mom was like, you have got to come take the garbage out right now. It's garbage day tomorrow. you got to get the garbage to the street. And so then I would do my chore. And my chore was to take the garbage out from the house to where the garbage cans were. And they were in between the two houses. So when you walked out the front door with the light on, it was pretty bright. And there was a street light. But the further around the edge of the house you went, the darker it became, the deeper the shadows, the harder it was to see. And, and I remember my heart racing. I remember I would like sing songs and I would uh, try and be loud just in case there was anybody back there, they could get out of the way or anything back there, it would leave. Uh, and I would, I would, you know, carry the garbage out and I would grab the garbage lid, slam it down and run with the garbage cans out to the street and then back inside. Because at that point, then I was just, I knew something was there. Something was after me. Something was going to get me. And the reality is there, there was nothing ever in the dark. Like I never had a bad experience in the dark. Most of my bad experiences have happened in the daytime, in the light. Uh, but there's something about the darkness, that unknown, the, the potential things that could be wrong. And we know all about this. We know all about this because we, we even use language about light and dark. We, we use these words to describe uh, a, a bad people or weird places. We use these words uh, to, to help share information like that's a dark place. I don't know if you should go there, or, uh, or those are dark thoughts. Uh, you need to not be thinking those types of things, and, and it's uh, pro- proliferated through books and movies. We see it all over the place, this battle between light and dark. And, and, and God uses that same language. Actually, I don't know if you knew that or not. God is the one that started this language uh, because I believe that in the very beginning, when God was at work for the very first time in our creation, uh, he uses this language so that we can understand this type of thought process. In, In Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, actually the very first few verses, it says this, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. 
So darkness was what there was, and God goes into that darkness, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that, it was, that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness, because the light is good, and the darkness, not so much. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Now, what we need to understand is this, like, we can be like, okay, that makes sense because he made the sun, but that's not what was happening here. Later in the creation stories, he creates the sun. This was before all of that. There was a demarcation between light and darkness. Before there was a sun and a moon, there was good and not good. There was light and dark. And so God, God uses this language because it's a language that we understand because in the dark is the unknown. In the dark is, is the scary and, and worrisome. In the dark is the terrifying. And, and we see that God uses this language throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament to, to share with us what his mission is, what his purpose is, how he is calling his people into the light. And the prophet Isaiah tells us a little bit about this. He says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, the darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness covers the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You see, God is saying, hey, I am going to be the light. I am going to illuminate. I am going to share, and I am going to let you know whose you are. From the beginning, God used this language. For all time, we have used the language light versus dark. And God says, I will have them turn to the light. I will have them turn to the light. And this imagery is so important in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament that, that it blends in and, and helps us to understand what God is telling us. Uh, there was in, in the New Testament, there's a scene where Jesus is at a celebration. It's the Feast of Tabernacles. In, in the Jewish faith, Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, is, is a time when God said, you will celebrate the first fruits, and you will remember all that I have done for you. And so it was a time where they, they celebrated the harvest, uh, and they cheered on what God had done in the harvest, but they also remembered what God had done for them in the wilderness, that God had led them through the darkness into His great light. It was a celebration of the harvest, but also a memory of the exodus. And, and the tabernacle uh, that, that they're talking about is, is a place that they would gather to get out of the sun, out of the, the, the harshness of the day, and they would be able to celebrate. And, and they moved that celebration when Jerusalem became a thing and the temple was built to the temple. And, and the whole, it was one of the pilgrimage uh, feasts that they would say, hey, if you are able to get to Jerusalem, you should go to Jerusalem so that you can celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and, and they, they, they had a huge celebration. As a matter of fact, the, the pinnacle, the, the top, the, the best part of the celebration was when they would have what they called the illumination of the temple. In the court of women, they had two menorahs. Uh, menorahs are those seven, seven candles, uh, and they light them up. Uh, and, and so they had two of those, and they were 75 feet tall. Two giant candles, candelabras, right? And, and, and the idea is when they are lit, that they share the light uh, with the entirety of the city. 
Uh, and God led them out of Egypt. They're remembering God leading them out of Egypt as a pillar of fire. And, and that's how they found their way through the darkness. God led them through the darkness into the light by the pillar of fire. The light itself led them through the darkness. And, and, and so when they light these candelabras, they're remembering what God has done. And it was so bright that it would light up the entirety of the city, not just the temple courts, but the entirety of the city would be lit so that they could see and it was all illuminated. And, and I love the way that Jesus uses this because it's at this point it's at this point that Jesus stands and the gospel of John records, he steps up and, and speaks out. It says this, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus uses this scene where, where the, the beauty of these candelabras has been lit. The temple is now illuminated. And Jesus says, hey, hey, see how these lights light up the city? You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready. I am the light of the world. Uh, everything will be within my light. It's not just the city. It's not just this area. It will be the entirety of the world will be within my light. I will illuminate everyone who wants to be illuminated. Even the pillar of fire that led your ancestors through the wilderness will be nothing compared to what I am. <laughs> Jesus was saying, hey, I am going to illuminate all of the world, and I want you to be a part of it. I want you to see what's going on, because that's, that's what light does for us, right? Light illuminates the, the darkness, and we can see all of the things that are going on. And, and Jesus is saying, I am going to illuminate everything, so you are going to be able to see all. That includes seeing yourselves clearly. That includes seeing others and their motives. That includes seeing our need, our need for God. And so the light comes into the world, and, and our problem is that we tend to act like cockroaches. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't think you were going to come to church and be, uh, be compared to a cockroach. But it's true, because we... We see the light, and like cockroaches, we scatter. We run for the shadows. We try to find the shadows and, and be safe and, and keep ourselves safe because in that light, everything is made visible, and we are seeking a way out. And if we're honest with ourselves, we still do that even today, even knowing what Jesus offers you see, Jesus said to a guy named Nicodemus, as he was explaining what this was going to be like, he says this, this is the verdict. Light, Jesus, has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because, of their, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. They'll be made clear. People will see them. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that they have done, all they have done has been done in the sight of God. <laughs> I think we truly are a bit too much into seeking shadows, into running, uh, running from the light. Because Jesus says, hey, I've got something better for you. Hey, I want you to see how you are so that you can be made more, so that you can be made better, so that you can be invited into something so much greater than you could ever imagine. 
And instead of following, we, we hold on to the darkness. Actually, the darkness of this world tries to hold on to us. It's a mutual, mutual hope of darkness, of shadow. It's the darkness that pulls us back. It's the darkness that we allow to pull us back. What is it in your life that drags you down into those dark places? What is it in your life that you allow so much control that it can dominate you? Maybe, maybe it's your finances. Maybe greed has got the best of you. And, and you're willing to share everything you are with God except, except for your finances or anger. Maybe you want to hold on to your anger because somebody has wronged you and they deserve everything they're going to get. And Jesus says, I, I want you to see that that's not the way you should be living. Maybe it's your lust, that you do things in the darkness and in the shadows that you are embarrassed of and that would hurt those that you love the most. And Jesus says, I want you to see that those are broken ways of living, that I want you to live more fully in me. Or maybe it's your pride that you are better than they are, that you deserve more than they do, and, and, and your pride drags you down. Jesus says, hey, I don't want you to be proud of yourself. I want you to live fully in me. Or maybe it's your envy. <laughs> you see what they have, and you want it. You believe that you should have it too. And that envy gets the best of you. And Jesus says, I've made you into the person that I've made you because I love you and I want you to be free from all of this. And, and the reality that the light brings to us, the reality that the light shares with us, that we see in the light is that we can't break free from this on our own. We can't make it through this on our own. We need God's light to notice this, but we also need God's light to be something that changes us from the inside out. And that's what Jesus' life, death, and resurrection make possible. The truth is we can't break free on our own. No matter how hard we try on our own, we are doomed to fail time and again. But Jesus says, I will make a way for you. Because I am the light of the world, I will illuminate your path and I will illuminate your heart that you might come to know a better way and that by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, that you will be made different. So how can we do this? What does it look like? And the first thing that we need to do is we need to recognize our need for God, that we can't do it alone, that we need that Holy Spirit, that we need time and prayer saying, God, help me to be more like Jesus. We need time in Scripture reading and understanding who God is and what God is calling us to, and we need to be serious about this. And the second is we need to let God guide our way, allow the light of the world to show us our path and watch where we are going. Follow God. Stay on that path. Move in the direction of God always and forever. And finally, <laughs> we need to stay out of the shadows. We need to stay out of the shadows. Put roadblocks up. Have people that help keep you accountable. Whatever it is that draws you back to the darkness, have someone that you can share that with and say, help me to stay out of the darkness. It's time to stop limiting what we share with God. I think far too frequently, far too frequently, we view Christ as, as just a way to get forgiveness for all the things that we've done and the things that we're going to do. But the truth is this, that life in Christ is so much more than forgiveness. It is a new life in Jesus. Not the same old life just forgiven, but a brand new life where Christ calls us to the newness of life, that we are made new. We are set free from sin and death and called into God's marvelous light. Not just light to see our brokenness, 
but light to transform us from the inside out. God invites us, invites us into his life so that we can be a part of his righteousness, so that we can celebrate all that we have in him. And we don't do this on our own. It is only through the realization that we need Jesus, that Jesus can then be enough. When we recognize that that far too frequently we fail, that far too often we falter, that we can say, God, we need you. And it's not a, a level of cleanliness. We don't have to get clean before we go and take a bath. The same is true of our relationship with God. We don't have to be clean enough or good enough or righteous enough for God to come to us. That's the glory of the light of the world is that he didn't wait for us to get good enough so that we could be made more good. He came when we were in our darkness and in the darkest points of our life. He comes and walks with us because he is the light of the world. He came to be our guiding light, our illumination, our hope, and our promise. He came to give us life. He came to restore a relationship that had been shattered and to invite us into the depth of love that is what the Father has in mind for us. He calls us into His marvelous light so that we might see not who we have been, but who we could be. Jesus knows all that we are and all that we can be. Our potential in Christ is limitless. And Jesus says, I want that for you. And so I wonder, I wonder what it would look like if we took that seriously. I wonder what it would look like if if just us, if just us, said, I'm going to live fully for Jesus. I'm going to allow him to make me so different that I don't even recognize myself. That I'm going to live so much in his light that I am going to become a beacon of light for him. I think the world would be a much better place if each and every one of us during this season said, God, I want you to be that for me. You said I am the light of the world. God, be that light in my heart and in my life. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in you. Help us in this moment and in every moment to come to surrender ourselves to you to recognize that we are not good enough on our own and that we need you. And Father, if if there is someone here today uh, online or in person that, that is on the edge of that step of faith, that they have never once taken that step across your relationship and, and entered into a deeper and abiding relationship with you, God, I just pray that you would, you would be present with them, that you would nudge their hearts so that they would know just how much you love them, that you would bring them into a deep and abiding relationship, and they might know that they are precious in your sight. Light our worlds, light our hearts and our minds, and let us be more like Jesus now and forever. We all agreed and said, amen.